the Lord be with you. Welcome to our morning worship service. We're glad that you are here. Out of an abundance of caution, our order of worship continues to look just a little bit different. Masking is an option and in trying to protect people with underlying health issues or those who are unvaccinated, we encourage everyone to continue to be vigilant, sanitize their hands and keep social distance. At this time, we'll continue to remain seated while singing hymns. If you are a guest, we extend a special welcome. If you have any questions we can answer for you about life and ministry here at Mount Olive Presbyterian Church, please feel free to see me or Reverend Diane after the service. After the service, greet your neighbors and welcome our guests with a fist bump or simply a smile and warm words. I invite you to review the announcements in the back of the bulletin and would like to bring to your attention the following. Next Sunday, we are having a stewardship brunch. If you're able, please bring a covered dish of either lunch or breakfast food. Otherwise, just bring yourselves. There are details in the bulletin. At the brunch, we'll be sharing a uh, slideshow of moments of hope or gratitude, and we ask that you send pictures to Reverend Diane this week so that yours can be included. Again, please see details in the bulletin. Are there any other announcements? If not, I would like to call Melba Keatley forward to share a moment ship for stewardship. Good morning. It's good to see you all here. It's good to be here with you. Um, they've asked um, me to speak just a moment on stewardship. And what I want to do is express um, appreciation for the generosity of this congregation. Um, I read an article about gen generosity where a teacher named Sharon Salzberg said that we often have an initial impulse to be generous only to talk ourselves out of it. And I think that since March 13th, 2020, we've had lots of opportunities to take, talk ourselves out of generous impulses. But I want to thank this congregation because you did not. While many churches experienced um, decreases or decline in giving, our church did not. So we want to say thank you for continuing to support this church and the mission of this church. Um, and I want to leave you with a couple of quotes that I have found. I have found many, but these are two that stood out to me. The first says, to give what you have to someone, it may be better than you think. And that's Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And then the other one is, we make a living by, by, by what we get. We make a life by what we give. And that was Winston Churchill. And I want to ask you to continue making a life by giving to this church. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Melba. Let us prepare our harps for worship. During the prelude, you're invited to pray for the needs of this church family for our community, nation, and world, for those leading worship, and for the Church of Jesus Christ all over the world. You want me back there?
We need to clone you, Ralph, don't we? <laughs> Some. Uh, <laughs> call to confession. The Lord of... The law of the Lord is perfect and it revives the soul. The commandment of the Lord is clear and enlightens the eyes. Let us come before God seeking forgiveness and mercy for the ways in which we have heard and not obeyed God's will. Please join me in our unison prayer. Oh, sorry about that. Um, let me start that over. That, happy are the people who do not listen to the wicked or keep company with those who make fun of others. And they reflect on God's law day and night. Worship God. I think I'll sing from up here. 466. That isn't. Oh, the hymn is for Blue 66. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. for the call to confession. The law of the Lord is perfect and it revives the soul. The commandment of the Lord is clear and it enlightens the eyes. Let us come before God seeking forgiveness and mercies for the ways in which we have heard and not obeyed God's will. Please join me in our unison prayer. It says in the Bible, O oh God, that you created the world through your word. Your word is powerful, and so are your words. They can heal, create a smile, be a declaration of love, but they can also hurt and destroy a sense of self-worth. Forgive us for the ways in which we cut others with the sharpness of our words. Give us your wisdom so that as a church and as individuals, we use our words to build up and not to destroy. Amen. Assurance pardon. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, the living word, we are forgiven. Our scripture lesson is on page 855, James 3, 1 
to t through 12. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we, will, we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their holy body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or make ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great force it is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, is a, fire a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Time of quiet reflection. Our, our next hymn is 399 in our blue hymnal. We walk by faith and not by sight. Good morning. Please join me in a word of prayer. And now, O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, at a special event for officers and their wives, the commanding general of a base was delivering what seemed to be an endless speech. Sorry. A young lieutenant slipped in late and grabbed an empty seat right near the front. After about 45 minutes, he muttered to himself, 
man, what an old windbag. I, he could have made his point 30 minutes ago. Well, the woman in the seat next to him turned to him coldly and said, excuse me, Lieutenant, do you have any idea who I am? No, ma'am, the man fumbled. I am the wife of the man that you just called an old windbag. Oh, said the lieutenant. He paused and thought nervously for a moment. Then he said, do you have any idea who I am? No, said the general's wife. Good, said the man, and he ran out of the room as fast as he could. <laughs> Well, a little corny, but it gives you the sense of what I'm trying to pro proclaim here today. Our words have a way of getting us into trouble. All of us have muttered things under our breath or had a lapse in judgment, allowed our anger or our pettiness to get the better of us, and we've said things that have hurt or offended another. So let me ask you just a show of hands, how many of you have ever said anything that you later regretted? Okay, Got, yeah, I see just about every hand going up. And on the other hand, let me ask you this, how many of you can still remember something hurtful that was said to you, even if it was many years ago? Okay, yeah. Well, James says in today's text that Ralph shared with us, the tongue is a small flame of fire, a world of evil at work in us. Words are powerful, and today with social media even more so, someone can put out a 280 character tweet or make a comment on Facebook and it can reverberate and take on a life of its own. People may understand your intent or they may finally see the real you. And the relative anonymity of social media encourages us to just let loose and say what's on our mind, things that we would never say to another's face. So today, as we are thinking about words and their power, let's remember that those words can be spoken, but they can also be typed or texted or videoed. Now, of course, words also have the power to do very positive and life-giving things. We know that truly how a simple hello and a smile to someone else can change the course of their whole day. Caring words spoken to a friend who's struggling or to a child who is uncertain, even to someone who's angry and just is losing it on a particular day, can convey our concern for them, can encourage and build them up. So let me ask you this, how many of you can remember, even if it was a long time ago, some encouraging, life-giving words that were spoken to you? Anybody? Maybe by a coach, a teacher, a parent, whatever, yes. Now James believes that our words are an extension of who we are. James is a pastor with a concern for the practical aspects of living out the Christian faith. And scholars believe that his letter was most likely a sermon that he had given and somebody went ahead and transcribed into Greek so that it could be distributed to a wider audience. Now the overall theme of his letter is that as followers of Christ, we should demonstrate an integrity a consistency between our faith and our actions. And this isn't only good for us, but it is good for the whole community because others will see or fail to see Christ in us. Now James has this term that he's fond of using throughout his letter, double-minded, which means pretty much what it sounds like to have two minds or two souls. So in other words, what James is getting at is that a double-minded individual may waver back and forth in character and in allegiance between following Christ's will and way or following their own way and the will of the world. 
And nowhere, according to James, is double-mindedness more evident than in our speech. Starting at verse 10, he cautions us, blessings and cursing come from the same mouth. My brothers and sisters, it should not be this way. Both fresh water and salt water don't come from the same spring, do they? Can a fig tree produce olives? Can a grapevine produce figs? So what we know is that our words can bless or curse another. And when we think about that word cursing, let's go ahead and broaden that definition beyond simply the use of foul language or swear words because I don't know about you, but I've known several people who have taken great pride in their clean language but can skillfully cut another person down all the same. So our throwaway comments, little asides, or outright rudeness can curse and wound others and in doing so demean the image of God in them and in us. Now James uses the very simple example of a fruit tree to remind us how double-mindedness violates who God has created us to be and what he has created us to do. You don't get olives from a fig tree, James says. You get figs. So too should we expect from a Christian Christ-like words. And this echoes a teaching of Jesus in the Gospels when he says, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So the struggle is real. I think we all know that. To try to live a life of Christian integrity, of Christian consistency, and as a result, to live in wholeness. And James and the early Christians saw it really as a war within the human soul. This cosmic struggle between good and evil being played out right in each one of our hearts. And so this is a battle we must fight daily, recommitting ourselves again and again to choosing God's will over our own, to choosing good over evil. We can begin with our words. They matter. They have power. So how can we do that, you may ask? Where do we begin to start to maybe change some habits that have gotten sloppy over time? Well, let me share just a few suggestions that may help us to be more intentional in and accountable for the words that we say. The following is adapted from a blog uh, by Cornerstone Christian Counseling. So here's just four brief points. First, we should ask God to help us be aware and conscious of our words and their power. So pause, reflect, think before you speak. And also, it's important to remember that this includes our self-talk, that inner monologue that we have when we say things about ourselves and who we are. So we should be a blessing to ourselves as much as we are a blessing to others. Number two is surrender what you feel is your right to complain. No one enjoys hearing complaints, and people that seem to enjoy it really don't have your best interests in heart. But a good idea is to make a deal with a friend, a trusted colleague, a, a spouse, a family member. Agree to allow each other to vent and to process your day or your week or your month whenever you get together. But put a time limit on that complaining. In other words, vent, then pray, giving it up to God, and then move on. Sitting in negative words is suffocating and unhealthy. Now number three, James says at verse two, we all make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect, 
and could also control ourselves in every other way. Now since none of us here, myself included, are perfect, be quick to apologize when you hurt someone with your words. And if you can't do it face to face, send them a sincere handwritten note or call them on the phone and commit to working on changing the way you speak and ask others to gently and kindly hold you accountable. Now finally, use words that encourage, that comfort, that edify and inspire. Ask God to guide you to speak words that will honor him and accomplish his purposes. I know I will always carry with me words spoken to me when I was a child. One Sunday at church, I remember having some sort of question or thought about the pastor's words about the sermon. And I'm sure it was nothing profound, but my mother encouraged me to ask our pastor about it as we were going through the line to greet him after the service. And to this day, I truly can't remember what the question was, but I do remember Pastor Tom and his warmth and his interest in me. And as we were concluding whatever we were discussing, I remember him saying, maybe you'll be a pastor one day. Now, of course, this might have just been some off-the-cuff remark, and I can certainly remember thinking, me, a, a pastor, what? I had never even considered that. And remember, this was in the 70s, where there weren't a whole lot of women as role models in the pastorate. But I will say that for years, his words, however seriously he meant them, lay quietly in the back of my mind, somewhere deep in my heart. They were a dormant little seed, but nonetheless, they were a seed. And his words began to expand my thinking about my own possibilities and gifts. And one day in God's time, that seed began to sprout, and I began to explore a call to ministry always thinking well hey if pastor tom saw something in me then maybe it's true maybe god does have some sort of calling for me to do so i guess my point is simply that we never truly know how our words can make a difference in someone else's life Teachers, I know you say things and you probably never hear back from your students the difference that you made, but I think we all carry stories of people like a teacher, a coach, again, some trusted adult who really made a difference when they encouraged us during a time of uncertainty. So we rejoice and we remember that God has given us the wonderful gift of speech He's also given us the gift of thoughtfulness, the gift of self-control. And day by day, God is pouring his love into our hearts. Our words have power. So let's choose them carefully and prayerfully that their power might be the power of Christ's love so that we might make the world and each other's lives just a little bit better by what we say and by what we do. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to join together now in a time of prayer, I would certainly direct your attention to our bulletin, to the second last and last page with all those illnesses, special needs, and some joys as well that um, our church family and those close to us are experiencing. 
please keep Alice Adams especially in your prayers as she is recovering from a broken collarbone. Um, the last I spoke with her, she was at her daughter's home and would be uh, examined again in about a week to see how things were healing. So we pray that she will not need any sort of surgery uh, to help that break mend. Um, there are others as well. We want to keep Brittany Schroeder's dad in our prayers as he is still in the hospital uh, recovering. Uh, there are, are other folks as well. Uh, so please uh, review this list. Keep uh, the Blizzard family in your prayers as little Aubrey uh, continues in this journey uh, to, it, through the world in her, in her little state and pray for her health and well-being. And let us go ahead now then and come to God in a word of prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. God of love, you gave your only Son, who underwent great suffering for our sake. In Christ, we believe that you understand the sufferings of the world and our own suffering, believing that you have walked in our footsteps and that you have lived through trials and tribulations, we with confidence offer now our prayers to you. We pray for wisdom that we might speak with love, with shalom, with compassion, and that we would strive to live in connectedness and understanding with each other. We pray for the courage so that we might live out our faith giving witness to you with our words and our actions. We pray today for all who need your healing touch in their lives, those we have named before you, others we carry in our hearts, and for the needs of those in our communities, our nation, and our world. Give hope to those who live with persistent illness, and strengthen those who care for them. Be with those who are approaching the hour of their death, and be with those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. As well, Creator God, we pray for all your creation as it suffers under our neglect and abuse. We pray for all the people you have made we ask that you would guide our leaders and those of other nations that this world might truly be as you created it to be, a world of peace and hope and love. These things we ask in Jesus' name as we now join our voices together in the prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen now I invite you to stand as you are able, as together we affirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Please be seated as we join in hymn number 438, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Friends, we indeed have a lot to be grateful today. In just a moment, we are going to recognize um, Anna Andrews. But first, we offer, of course, our gratitude to God. Uh, the hymn that we just sang uh, reminds us of the ties that bind us, of the folks who sat in the sanctuary and the number of churches that sort of came before it and pledged in faithfulness their lives and uh, the work of their hands to God. And they did that on faith that the next generation might benefit from it. So we are heirs to that faithfulness. And what we do today will help the next generation of Christians. And we trust that God will provide those Christians. And so we give with faith, whether it's our money, whether it's the work of our hands, our lives, our words, our actions. So with those things in mind, let us join in our prayer of blessing to dedicate all that we will give to God today and in the coming week. Lord, who gives us everything we have, we return with joy a portion of our bounty, giving to the work of your church and your world what is already yours, ourselves, our lives, and our means. May good come from these gifts. Teach us to use what we have with wisdom and compassion. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. bittersweet day as we bid goodbye and Godspeed to Anna Andrews, who has served so ably and so joyfully in our office for 10 years. Um, so let me first, Anna, let me invite you to come on up, please. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> yes, here you come. 
<laughs> you are our Wonder Woman, and I'm just going to put this little, I know, your hair looks so pretty, I don't want to ruin it, but here's a little Wonder Woman crown to, re you, really, I, I just have so enjoyed working with you, you made my transition here so easy and just so comfortable and warm, you have been a constant presence in the office as we have had various pastors take the helm, and we are just so excited for you as you go to the Wayne County Schools and bless them there with your sense of joy, with your um, just your constant energy and the way you can, like a Wonder Woman, handle those multiple priorities and still get the bulletin and the newsletter and all those things out. So we are very grateful. And um, Patsy, is it? Can I call you down for a moment? Um, we have something as well from uh, the congregation to you. And let me see, I do have, just in case, I know you don't want to make a speech, Patsy, but if you got, <laughs> you got anything to say, I can kind of hold it in your direction, but. Patsy hates to talk about I know she does, okay, well, I'm going to yell it, but. I just want to present this on the Catholic congregation, our church. It is, you want to open it and see, yeah, let's, let's open it, I mean, or is it too much to? Yeah. Um, this is the fun stuff. So everybody wants to see. Sorry, I know we need a little people here, but yeah, so maybe. Of course, we'll have our reception outdoors so you can talk with Anna and see what we've given her, but oh, well, that was the, yeah, so it's a clock that acknowledges her service. Unitarian Church, yeah, well, that is from, um, you'd like to say, I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot, but okay, all right, I know, and it's so good to have your mom here, too, but here. Mom, thanks, yeah. I've been talking about her for years. It oh. <laughs> is it, it's on, um, okay. Just, it's felt like home right from the beginning, and I'm just so glad to have spent all this time here. Thank you. Oh. You know, so. We love you. Yeah, it is. Well, let's it is, I know that you are too. Um, let me say a word of prayer over you, okay? And we'll just have a word of prayer to, to bless Anna on her way. Gracious God, for everything there is a season, and we uh, know that you have wonderful things planned for Anna in her future. At the same time, we thank you for the season of love and care that she has given to us, for her faithfulness to you and to this church. Uh, we ask that the ties that bind us would never be severed, that um, we would continue to keep in touch, to think warm thoughts, and to pray for one another. But again, uh, bless her as she goes forth to serve in a new way. And again, um, give her all the good things that you have in store for her. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, you're welcome. So we can get that later if you want. But um, so it, we will, in a, just a few moments, uh, head outside and enjoy a light reception. I also want to mention um, there is a basket for cards, but if you didn't bring, happen to bring a card, there's also some um, blank cards that you can write a message to Anna on um, and put in that basket so she can take that with you, or with her, excuse me. So now, finally, we have a little bit different benediction today. It is a sung benediction, and um, Kathy is going to go ahead and play, play the tune through once. It's a familiar tune that you will recognize, and then we will join together in these words as we bless ourselves and ask for God's blessing on our way. Okay. <clears throat>
May all the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you. Amen.